In the year 2008, when I was 14 years old, I flew overseas for the first time. And that's my favourite building. My destination, Nepal. Little did I know at the time, but this would be the first of many trips to Nepal for me, each one special in its own unique way. But on this particular trip, I'd be heading over with a small group of teenagers to connect with an orphanage that my church was supporting. The coming videos in this series will showcase some of the great experiences we got to share, like playing soccer and painting with the kids, exploring inside and outside of Kathmandu, and even going on a safari in Chitwan. I wonder if an elephant would stand a chance against a rhino. But in this video, I really want to share with you my first impressions of a country so vastly different to my own in Australia, and what exactly it was about this small country in the shadow of the Himalayas that made me want to keep coming back time and time again. Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I would like to apologise for some of my camera work over the next few vlogs. I'd like to think it does improve, but uh, on display in this first video here, it, uh, it is pretty shaky, it is pretty frantic. I'm sort of swinging it from side to side, trying to capture every moment, uh, every new sight, every new sound, all that kind of stuff. Kids these days would probably put me to shame with their skills at 14 years old, but uh, it's a bit different to using an iPhone or any of the cameras these days. They're a bit less forgiving, and uh, I was very, very excited to just capture everything I saw. Hey, Rowan. Hey, guys. How's it going? Like I said before, it was my first time flying overseas, so that meant my first time on a big airplane. What? Oh, they take to read. Yeah. Are you interested in newspapers? No, I'm good. Okay, this is where I get the dramatic. Where's this? Dramatic. I don't know. Oh, first. Dun, dun, dun. oh okay. That's just. That's just. Oh, okay. Good evening. Uh huh. All those screens. Whoa, look at the TVs. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hi. Hello, how are you? I like it. Nice, no, nice. There you go. Toilets. Leave it alone. Ticket. This is where we sat. It's pretty awesome. TV. TV looks really big in the camera. There's our tray, there's our magazines. <laughs> yep. Yep. And there's a remote control phone there. It's pretty awesome. Pretty proud of that. <laughs> yeah, everyone at school is going to be like this. And we're all sitting together, which is yeah, pretty good. It also meant my first stop over at the famous Changi Airport in Singapore. And uh, for a kid my age, it felt more like a theme park. So in the eight hour stopover that we had there, I can remember just running around trying to experience everything I could. Yeah, there's money in there as well. Whoa, oh, this is really awesome. It's like all, the coins make it all glittery. This is a koi pond, just so I remember the name. It's very nice. My first moments off the plane once we landed in Kathmandu itself were eye-opening enough. The airport was different. It was the first time I had to travel across a tarmac to the airport itself from the plane. And uh, inside, seeing the foreign language, seeing the different architecture and uh, trying to navigate through customs and border control and stuff like that, it was uh, very, very exciting. I just wanted it all to be over so that I could get out onto the streets and actually see what I'd traveled there to see. I should probably also take a moment to introduce my friends who I traveled over there with. There was Matt, Annie, Maddie, and Emma. And we called ourselves Youth for Nepal and we were led by Bronwyn, who, like Matt, had experience in Nepal before. Joining us on our trip as well with a bounty of world knowledge and experiences in travelling was Bruce. Once we'd gone through customs, we jumped in a van and started making our way to our guest house. I'm so happy to be back. Hey, it's good. It's such a good feeling. Will you stand I'm so happy to be back. It's such a good feeling. This was the first time I really got to experience what Kathmandu was like. The sights, the sounds, the smells, and even the feel of things was so different to Australia, and in a way, really overwhelming. Uh, you can see me sort of swinging the camera from side to side here, just trying to see every little thing that I could. I've got Coca-Cola. I have to like, take a picture of your faces. Do you mind getting any of this? This is good. There. Just in that drive from the airport to the guest house, I was already starting to get some idea of the contrast in living conditions between people in Nepal. We went by the palace, we drove through markets, and we also passed shanty towns and people living in conditions that I'd never seen before. To this day, I really love the unusual architecture and the way buildings are designed, sometimes sort of jutting out all over the place, over the streets, um, places where you wouldn't expect, teeming with colour and decorations and all that kind of stuff, all while being surrounded by some of the most beautiful mountains you'll ever see. I couldn't believe a road system like the one that I was seeing before my very eyes could work like it did, 
I was waiting at any moment for there to be a car accident or something like that, but in my five or six trips to Nepal, not once did I ever see a car accident. So obviously, whatever they're doing seems to be working just fine. But I don't think the roads would be half as safe without something else that you might have noticed by now. Coming from Australia, honking your horn is a sign of anger, of outrage, just telling someone, get out of my way, you're doing something wrong. But uh, in Nepal, it seems like your hand is almost glued to the horn just to let people know where you are. So that when people are sort of centimetres from each other, centimetres from collision, everyone seems to have a pretty good idea of exactly what, el what everyone else is doing. And that's thanks to the 24-7 blaring of horns. <laughs> Trying to see how far away the car was. On this particular car trip, I didn't get much of a chance to take in some of the smells of Kathmandu in Nepal. The smell of food, of spices, of incense, and of course coriander, which seemed to be all over the place. But on the other hand, there was also no avoiding the smell of some of the trash piles on the side of the road. And coming from Australia, where litter is still an issue, but nowhere near on the scale as it is in Kathmandu, I've got to admit, it was pretty disappointing. But like with everything, there's the good and there's the bad. And I can just remember being so excited. And uh, I don't think on that trip, I even got a chance to feel homesick because I was just so excited about what was to come the next day and the next moment that I'd get to experience. It's a royal palace. That's a cool car. Now, as I did on most of my trips, we stayed at the Tibet Guest House, which is an awesome place, highly recommend it. The customer service is so friendly, the food's really nice, they've got these beautiful gardens, oh, this great fine. rooftop garden hey, and Maddie. eating area as well. The rooms are great. We had a problem with having too small of a room, so we were easily sort of bounced up to a slightly bigger room, which was awesome as well. This is the bedroom. Yep, this is the bedroom. This is Matt's bed. And this is my bed. We made a deal, Matt gets the shower first. The shower, the shower, the shower. Oh, the shower. Oh, it's, it's good, it's sweet. Yeah, it's, it's quite hot, it's very hot. We've got the fan going. And Matt's going to get a fan for his. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty big. You should've seen the room we had before. Hey, man. Now, I feel like that sums up my first impressions and you'll hear some more of my experiences in Nepal throughout the coming videos and uh, some of the different things and super fun stuff that we got to do. That's awesome. But I would like to take a moment to thank my teammates uh, who were a couple of years older than me. I was uh, in year nine, I do believe. They were in year 12. I feel like looking back on the memories, I wouldn't have been aware of this at the time, but I feel like looking back, I could have come across as the annoying little kid that was just, you know, trying to, uh, that had the camera on 24-7 that was always sort of trying to get people's now. attention and trying yeah. to, you know, share in the moments. But that was the sort of special thing about this group, uh, including Bronwyn and Bruce as well, is that at no point, despite me sort of not being uh, the same age or despite me not being, you know, part of their really sort of close group, I never felt excluded. I always felt like I was part of the crew. And I don't think I could have asked for a better group to experience something so vastly different and out of my comfort zone than the one I got to travel over there with in Youth for Nepal. So uh, to my friends and uh, my teammates and Bronwyn and Bruce, a uh, huge thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, listening back on my squeaky voice and all that kind of stuff, uh, it's, you know, it took a lot of patience, I'm sure, but um, thanks so much for taking me in and uh, showing me such a good time. Megan and Shane Best fried rice I've ever had. Carrots, they just go together. Mm, nice. <laughs> And, um, We've got lots of fried rice heaters. <laughs> this is lunch on day two. Oh, sorry, Emma. <laughs> In the next instalment of my 2008 trip to Nepal, we'll be heading to the orphanage to make some new friends and take part in some of their daily life. Thanks for watching. Hello. Yep. This is a, it, the camera's on, so it's like filming ya. Namaste. <laughs> So you're Pramod Nepal, yep. Yeah. Um, can you write down any more language for me or? Okay. Sweet. Uh, Pramod's been sort of like guiding us around a bit. <laughs> he lives around here, so yeah. Just say namaste or? Namaste. <laughs> this is, yeah, it's Pramod, like I said before. This is, are you security guard? Security guard. Yeah, sweet. 
<laughs> okay, see ya.